1 Thessalonians 5, 13 through 24. Live in peace with each other, and we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive, encourage the disheartened, help the weak, be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good, reject every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Terry. Over the course of the summer, we're talking about how can we experience the Holy Spirit more in our lives? How can we understand what God would want for our lives and the gifts that he gives to each and every one of us? John Wesley, who was the lead person in starting the the, uh, Methodist church, had three simple rules. We studied them in a Bible study this week, and uh, they're very simple. Do no harm. Do good. Stay in love with God. It's a little book, tiny little book that uh, they're all gone. I'd say you could have a copy of it if you want one. Tell Pastor Lisa she'll order you one. But uh, they're very simple, very simple. Do no harm, do good, stay in love with God. But they're not always so easy to accomplish. Have you ever been discouraged? Anybody here ever been discouraged? I was um, in the, um, what do they call it, talent show? in my high school. It was my senior year. And for one reason or another, they decided that I should be the male singer for the talent show, which was questionable, but okay. I thought, well, let's figure out what to do. I didn't know enough about music to do things exactly right, but I knew that you needed to find a song that fit with your voice. So I found the perfect song. When you're alone and life is making you lonely, you can always go. Yeah, it was perfect, right? Just listen to the music of the traffic in the city. I knew it. Oh, it was like a knock it out of the park song. But the director of the show wanted two songs. And so he knew I played the guitar, all right? So he said that he wanted me to pick a song that I liked. And the song I liked was a song called Lisa, Lisa by Cat Stevens. How many of you have ever heard of it? Yeah, that's about what it was like in high school, too. I discovered that there were only a handful of people in the whole world that have ever heard of this song, which is okay, because you know I had downtown, right? Except we got really close to the show, and the guy directing the, the show said, We have to pull one of the songs. And, you know, I know that the kids are going to relate with that Lisa Lisa song, so we're going to pull downtown. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do it. Don't don't do that. That's the song. Nah, we're going to pull that because it'll be much more popular. Trust me, I know. I got up and started singing Lisa Lisa. It started right away. The booze. The cat calls, get off the stage, Kraft. It went on for a week. People, as I'm walking through the halls of school, look at me and go, Lisa, Lisa. You know, I'm like, oh, man, kill me now. Kill me now. Have you ever had the experience of having a thousand teenage peers mock and boo you off a stage? It's enough to cause you to be discouraged from ever speaking or talking, or certainly singing in front of people again. Do no harm. What is it about people that for some reason we have this this sort of feeling that we have to hurt each other? Live in peace with each other, and we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive. What is it about people nowadays that they've got so much time on their hands 
that all they could figure out that they should do is cause trouble for everybody else. You know, it used to be that we had watched the news for a half an hour or an hour in the evening. Now the thing runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week on like 15 channels, and you even get alerts on your cell phone, right? I had somebody say to me that that's part of our problem, the cell phones. Constant barrage of people ripping each other apart, tearing each other down. It gets to the place where I don't want to turn on the news because it's not news. Has anybody else seen this? It's not news anymore. I just want to know what happened in the world today. I understand some of that news is not good news. The fire's out west, you know. Um, trouble with a congressman. I, I understand you might have to tell us the bad news. I get that. But this constant attacking and destroying other people. Why? Because people have too much time. Literally too much time on their hands. So, so he tells us we shouldn't be that way. In fact, Jesus in chapter 5 of Matthew said to us, I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Could you imagine every newscaster before they went on the air if they had to read that line? Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. We think we're supposed to hate people who disagree with us. And God calls us actually to love people who've even hurt us. After World War II, the United States decided to rebuild Japan and rebuild Germany. We actually spent hundreds of millions of dollars fixing their country. Because we found out that after World War I, when we punished them and we put, we put punishing taxes and, and, and reparations on them, they just came back and went to war against us again. But instead, we've made friends for decades. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Paul is writing to the Thessalonians. Boy, that's a mouthful. And the Thessalonians were a group of people that when he went there, didn't treat him very well. They tried to throw him in jail. They beat him up. They wanted to kill him. And the reason was because he didn't agree with everything they said. Live in peace with each other. Do no harm. The symbol for peace in our world, what's, it, what's, it, what's the animal? Anybody know? A dove. Do you know why? Because the dove is a symbol in the Bible of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus was baptized, it said the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus like a dove. So actually, the world symbol for peace is the Christian symbol for the Holy Spirit. And if we have the Holy Spirit, we'll have more peace. You know how we pass the peace of the Spirit with one another? To pass love. To pass joy. To pass blessings. Which is what God wants us to do. There's a couple of gifts I want to talk about this morning. Maybe you have these gifts. Everybody can have them to some degree. One is encouragement, and the other is what's called exhortation. Encouragement is just to help people to feel better about life. Wouldn't it be great if everywhere you went, people were trying to build you up and seeing how wonderful you are? Wouldn't it be great if, 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 if you'd have a place where people would just say you're fantastic? I'll tell you right now. Before you were even born, God decided that there was something absolutely amazing about you. And he wrote it into your DNA that you could be absolutely incredible if you live for what God made you to be. That's the truth. You are amazing if you allow God to work through you. Now, the interesting thing about exhortation, which some people see as preaching, and the word encouragement, is that in the Bible, they come from the Greek word periklesias. Now, I, I read that, and I was looking that up, and it was like, what? I, I, I know that word. The word actually means to come alongside. And it's used to represent the Holy Spirit. Because in the Holy Spirit, God comes alongside us, and the Holy Spirit encourages us and nurtures us and, and, and tells us 
wonderful and great things and blesses us. So the gift of, 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 of Periclesius is really just the gift of having the Holy Spirit in a powerful way in your life, enough so that you turn off and tune out all the negative noise and do no harm. Be good. There's an interesting one, isn't it? Be good. In verse 15, it simply says, make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do good and what is good for each other. And for everyone else, do good. Don't do evil. In fact, again, it goes on to say, reject evil of every kind in verse 22. Reject evil. Push it out of your life because evil destroys you. Because sin has negative consequences. And when we pull evil into our lives, we open up our lives for brokenness. But we get tempted. Anybody here ever been tempted? Is there anyone? Okay, I was afraid it was just me. This was a long time ago. Confession time. I was downtown in Buffalo. And a guy came up to me with a package. You know, a computer box. And he said, this fell off a truck. Anybody know what that means? (laughs) They don't really fall off trucks. I knew what that meant, okay? Okay. But I also knew, you know, it's going to go to somebody. So, you know, they were offering me a $1,500 computer for $150 cash. I knew that was wrong. I knew that was a bad thing, and I shouldn't do it. But I'm going to get a $1,500 computer for $150. Come on, somebody's going to get it. Why not? You know how you do that? You start making these rationalizations. So I got the $150, and I gave it to the guy, and he ran away. And I scurried off to my car, and I opened up my package really good to see my new computer. And there were four phone books in there. Dear God, I'm sorry. You know that evil is going to hurt you. You know that when you do wrong, the consequences are going to be bad, right? We know that. We're aware of it. That if you bring evil into your life, evil into your house, evil into your world, that there will be consequences that will cause you to have pain and hurt other people. So John Wesley said it's very simple. Took it right here from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Do good. Strive to do good. And what's good for each other and for everyone. Because evil is trying to destroy you. In the very beginning of the Bible, there were two brothers, Cain and Abel, and they brought their offerings before God. Cain brought whatever leftovers he had, and Abel brought the the best parts of what he had. And God accepted Abel's offering, but he rejected Cain's offering because it, it wasn't given with such a sincere heart, and Cain got mad. And so God said to Cain these words. He said, if you do what's right, will you not be accepted? But if you Do not do what is right. Sin is crouching at your door. Its desire is to have you. But you need to rule over it. And the way we rule over it is through the power of the Holy Spirit because the Bible says greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. If you don't have God in your life, you can't overcome evil. You can't overcome Satan. He's an archangel. You really think you're better than an archangel? You can't resist evil without God. But with the power of the Holy Spirit, you can literally cast that evil out. You do not have to be mastered by it. And I will tell you right now, Satan and his demons know what their future is. The Bible tells us they're going to be tossed in a lake of fire. They know they're going to be destroyed. And you know what they want to do? They want to take as many of us with them as they can. As soon as you put evil in your life, as soon as you allow evil to start controlling you, You will see bad things happen. So it's very simple. Be good. May may God keep you blameless, it says. Blameless at the coming of the Lord. Live into the power of the Holy Spirit. In fact, Ephesians actually says, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. It says it this way in chapter 4. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building up others according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. 
See the encouragement? And do not grieve the Holy Spirit with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Just be good and do no harm and live at peace with each other. But somehow that's not so easy to do. And the problem is there's a tension between being good and doing no harm. You see, for some people, they hear do no harm, and they mean treat everybody okay and accept whatever they are and whatever they do as being all right. And that leads to a form of licentiousness which brings evil into the world. So sometimes doing no harm and trying to live at peace with everyone else means letting anything happen which can cause evil to spread throughout our world. And so then we have people who are saying, well, then we need to do good and concentrate on that. And they come across as self-righteous and judgmental and unloving. And you see the problem we have. And we're just trying to do what God wants, but we become part of the problem instead of part of the solution. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do good, what is good for each other and for everyone else. See, the difficulty is is that we've got our focus in the wrong direction. If you've been here before, you've probably seen this before. You know, my jacket on the outside is kind of rough. That's kind of to protect me from the world around me, and it's nice and soft and silky and comfortable on the inside, okay? But what God wants us to do is turn the whole thing inside out, right? Right? And start living with the softness, the the love, the kindness, the warmth for everybody else. Be loving to everyone and put the harshness, the judgment, the concern about getting things right on you. If everybody concentrated on making themselves better and stopped worrying about their neighbors but loved their neighbors, we'd have so much less pain in our world. God wants us to live inside out. The love we have and the concern we have for ourselves and those we we know, he wants us to turn out to the world. And, and, And the concern about being righteous, he wants us to turn that towards us. Because people won't care what you know until they know you care. People won't listen to what God says is right and wrong until they have God in their heart. And so if we live into God, we'll live into the power that he wants to give us. It's like a house. You know, we're talking about making a house a home, and we've gone outside. How many of you have a front yard? How many of you have a backyard? How many of you have both? Yeah, right? How many of you live in your front yard? (laughs) One or two of you. Most of us don't live in our front yards. We spend a lot of effort, money, and everything else to make the front yard look perfect for other people. And we live in love and comfort and joy in our backyard. We have a barbecue. We sit in our comfortable chairs. We have picnics. And we don't even worry if it doesn't look perfect because other people aren't seeing it, so it's okay. God wants us to flip that around. At Silver Lake, we live in our front yard. We keep our junk in the backyard, okay? And we never go there except to put junk there. And we put our love out on the front yard. In fact, we have three layers of porches. Three layers of porches all the way up. The downstairs porch is the front yard for us. When you're sitting on the downstairs porch, everybody that goes by wants to talk and visit with you. When you're sitting on the upstairs porch, it means you really don't want to talk to anybody. And people leave you alone. And if you go up in the tower, nobody talks because they can't even see you. We spend most of our time on the downstairs porch. Because God wants us to show our love to other people, to live out love. But we can only do that if our priorities are set by God himself. And our difficulty is, is we're not living for God. We're living for everything else. We've lost our focus. People are complaining. People are unhappy. People are saying life is bad. I read an article in the newspaper the other day, and they said 
that actually the crime rate has gone way down. The murder rate is, is plummeted. The amount of people who are living in poverty around the world and in our country is at the lowest point ever. We've gone from having 30% of the, of the world's population living in hunger to 10%. And everybody thinks life is terrible. His philosophy is it's because of this thing. Constant, constant, constant barrage with things that are wrong. I don't understand that because I only use this to make phone calls. I know it's an amazing concept, but to me a phone is something you make phone calls on. I, I, I don't do all that other stuff. I stay disconnected on purpose because I want to live into the joy of the Lord. It says in verse 16, rejoice always. Not because my life is perfect, not because I have no problems, not because everything goes good for me, but because it's better to rejoice in the Lord than to be miserable without him. And God blesses us when we keep our focus on him. Do you know this is the most prosperous culture that has ever existed? We are the most prosperous nation in the world that has ever been on the face of the earth. Most of us live like kings and queens would have imagined living two or 300 years ago. We have more comfort more blessing than anybody has ever had, and our culture is turning away from God. The people who are living in brokenness, the people who have very little, that barely struggle to even have enough food to eat, are turning to Jesus left and right all over the world. And it's only us people that have been blessed by God that have decided we don't need him anymore. See where the problem is? We keep our focus on God. And to tell you the truth, if we don't keep our focus on God, God is going to take away the blessings. That's what he promises. So we need to learn how to turn to God. In verse 18, it says, give thanks in all circumstances. Be thankful to God that you have your health, as much of it as you have. Be thankful to God that you have, have a home to live in, that you have people to love and people that love you. Be thankful to God that you have a church you can go to worship in. Be thankful to God for all the blessings God gives to you. You got to accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative, hold on to what's affirmative, don't mess with this or in between. But it's not just positive thinking. It's about the power of, of that joy and that thanksgiving that God gives to us in every circumstance. As Paul says, whether, whether well-fed or hungry, whether rich or poor, we can do all things through Christ, who is our strength. So the last one, stay in love with God. The most important one. You're not going to be good if you don't have God in your life. You won't even have the power to do it. You're going, to, you're going to get miserable with each other and do harm if you don't have God in your life. So the most important one is to stay in love with God. People say, why don't I experience the Holy Spirit more? Why don't I have God more in my life? How much time, how much energy do you put with God? You know, it's fascinating that in our culture... What I try to teach and what our other pastors try to teach in this congregation is that it would, would change your life if you could spend five minutes a day with God and people go, where am I going to find five minutes? Are you serious? I've got television shows to watch. I've got YouTube to check out. I've got emails and I've got Facebook and I've got chit-chat and chip-chip and dip-dip and that rap, <laughs> right? I do not have time for five minutes for God. What would happen if you actually spent serious time staying in love with God? We see relationships falling apart all over our culture because people are so busy worrying about what somebody said on Facebook and not caring about what the person next to them is saying. Have you been to the restaurant lately and seen that? It's fascinating. Three people sitting at a table doing this. <laughs> you know, I go by and I say, are you guys talking to each other? Even on the phone, that'd be okay. But they're not. They're not. Do you know that there's an unforgivable sin in the Bible? Anybody know that? Do you know what it is? 
It's, a, it's in Mark chapter 3. And it goes like this. Well, maybe it doesn't. Mark chapter 3 tells us that the one sin that cannot be forgiven is blaspheming the Holy Spirit. And what would it mean to blaspheme the Holy Spirit? It says you can be forgiven anything but blaspheming the Holy Spirit. To blaspheme the Holy Spirit simply means to turn our back on God. Truth is, if you're worried about committing the unforgivable sin, you haven't committed it. Okay? But we have people all over the world who are deciding that the least important thing in their life is God. When it needs to be the most important thing, we need to be in love with God. We need to make an easy way for God. And we need to encourage each other and support each other along the way. Because we live in a discouraging world these days where it seems like people take everyone's dreams, even their dreams and their gifting from God, and they smash them apart. I've been watching America's Got Talent this summer. You all know that, right? But there's also one called Britain's Got Talent, and I found, I found this one on Britain's Got Talent. And do you work, Sean? Yes, I do. I'm an accounts manager. You got kids? Yeah, three. They're yeah, all three. here as well somewhere, yeah. Okay, so why have you left it till now to come on a show like this? Um, if I'm honest, I, I just get really scared. <laughs> just, it just, yeah, scares me a bit. And you're scared of what? Someone saying to you, you're not very good? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, you've come to the right place. <laughs> I mean, if you're at all worried about someone saying, didn't like your singing. I, did, I didn't put myself here. Right, and I, who did? I, my, my daughter actually applied on my behalf. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, not much pressure then. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm looking forward to it. Good luck. Lost in so many different ways out in the darkness with no right. Okay, Sean. It was so jolly and happy and horrible that it it wasn't emotional. Oh Simon, sometimes I hate that guy. Don't you? I mean, it was beautiful. It sounded great. She's doing a great job. It's really good. Yeah, shut it down. It was terrible. It was too nice, too joyful and jolly. What is wrong with this man? Sometimes it can get so discouraging. You know, like a crowd of teenagers telling you you can't sing, that you have to go to school with every single day. It would make you want to put your guitar away for... 25 years, which is exactly what I did. Makes you want to quit. God wants us to be encouragers. Periclesius, come alongside one another. And the way we do that is by allowing the Holy Spirit to come out of us, to pour into the world around us and encourage one another. As God encourages us, we're to encourage each other. Even if the whole world is against us, if God is for us, no one can stand against us. God made you to do something absolutely incredible. He gifted you with a special ability that God intended for you to live into so that you not only would have joy, but that you could bring joy and wonder and the blessings of God to the people around you. We need to embrace the gifts from God and the power of the Holy Spirit. And we need to encourage one another. Come alongside them. Even preaching. As much as you want to learn something. As much as you hope to discover something about God. You can go learn that on Google. The reason we come to hear about God. Is to hear that we can be encouraged. To be more than we could be. Remain continually in prayer, it says in verse 17. How, how do you do that? How do you stay constantly in prayer? One of the cool things about these is you can stay connected to anybody, anywhere. 
So I had a funeral yesterday. A, a wonderful woman was part of our church for, for, for more years than most of you. One of our matriarchs, Jean Lindemuth, passed away. And we did her funeral, and we had her family and a few friends here. And I see some guy with his phone up. I'm thinking, really? You're recording the funeral? I mean, that's just a little, uh, really? Uh, okay, it's all right. It's not bad. It's just, I thought, you know, if you wanted to do that, we would have had Adrian do it. Okay? They weren't recording the funeral. They weren't recording the funeral. Valerie, Jean's granddaughter, who came to church here, works for FEMA. And two days before her grandmother's funeral, they told her she had to go out west and fight fires. So Valerie was here with us from California at a funeral. How cool was that? I talked to her afterwards. We talked to each other. And she felt as if she was a part of this. You can stay in constant contact with God. If we can call people in California, we certainly can call out to heaven at any moment. Staying constantly in prayer just means staying connected with God so that he can embrace us and empower us, which he says he will do. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you or make you better through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. And God not only will change us, he calls us to encourage each other in the effort. Now, now in the book of Ephesians, it says that we're supposed to speak the truth in love with each other. Simon drives me crazy. Shows up in those white t-shirts. You know, come on, guy, get a, get a wardrobe here. Hello. He drives me crazy. And he stops people in the middle of their performance. And you, wanna, you really want to slug them. But he's not doing it to hurt. He's doing it to bring the best out in other people. So you stop, Sean. And then things change. The with you. Can you sing that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Please. I'm trying. I think I'm thinking it's the beginning. Sorry. Hang on. Hang on. Start again. Start again. Start again. It's okay. I'm nervous now. I picked. Up your shirts this morning. I don't know why. I don't know why. And every place we ever walked, and everywhere we talked, I miss you. Never leave my. Mind. So much of you is left behind. You took my hopes with you. Your call, everyone says it's all in my head. I can't accept it yet. I keep that you just give in. I know that I can live with this pain, these feelings of regret. Every place I want to be, I want to see.
You know, I watched this girl sing, and man, you know, <laughs> what do you do after that? So I looked her up on the internet because I wanted to see more of her. I wanted to see how she did with Britain's Got Talent. Years ago, Sean was a backup singer for ABBA. And even though she told him that before she went on stage and that she had done these, these little gigs, if you will, they decided that she was a fake and too professional, and so they booted her off the show. So there's no more videos of Sean. And she said, the worst part is, I had to go and apologize to my daughter. People can be so hard. They can be so cruel. They can break you and hurt you and make you think that there's no reason to ever try again. But remember, God made you for something incredible. God made you for something amazing. And it doesn't matter if the whole world should say, you can't sing because you picked Lisa Lisa. With God. You can and will do amazing things. So let the Holy Spirit come aside you. Forget about trying to do it all yourself. Stop working on what everybody tells you in this world. And let God change you and transform you. I was getting dressed this morning, and I noticed I have this jacket that has this really cool blue lining. And that's what I thought I put on this morning. And so when I turned my, my coat inside out, I went, what? Shoot. Shoot. It would have matched and looked so cool, and you know. And instead, it's like, what? Does that happen to you? Like, you got this perfect plan how everything's going to work, and you mess up. I mess up all the time. And I wish it was just wearing the wrong jacket from time to time. The truth is, is everybody messes up. You know, everybody makes a mistake. And sometimes people make mistakes that hurt others. We can be part of the problem or part of the solution. We can turn back and smack somebody between the eyes. Or we can offer them love and maybe change this world a little bit. You can't count on other people and their reaction, but you can decide what you're going to do with yours. Go and live as people of peace. Do no harm, be good, and stay in love with God. And may God bless you this day and always. Amen.